The point of this video is to make descent planning easy. You don't need VNAV, you don't need a calculator, just your brain and some very simple math, and I'm gonna show you how. This first method is simple. All we're doing is looking at the GPS, looking at the time to the destination, and looking at our altitude. The airplane's at 40,000 feet, and the airplane is approximately 40 minutes from the destination. If at 40 minutes out, we descend at 1,000 feet per minute, obviously we're gonna lose that 40,000 feet of altitude. But as the airplane descends, true airspeed is going to drop significantly, and the airplane would reach its desired altitude far earlier than anticipated. I will show this concept in more detail in just a minute, but for now, let's move on. Now as the airplane approaches 20 minutes from the destination to lose 40,000 feet, obviously the airplane would have to descend at 2,000 feet per minute. And in this example, 10 minutes out to lose 40,000 feet, the airplane would have to descend at 4,000 feet per minute. This method simply takes the altitude loss required divided by the time to go to come up with a required rate of descent. If in smooth air during the descent, keep the power up and get the airspeed all the way to the red line. Do not try to slow down and maintain a specific airspeed. Now, let's say there's a 100 knot headwind at this altitude. Would you descend even faster to get down out of that strong headwind? Will ground speed increase losing that headwind? What will true airspeed do? Here's that discussion. I'm going to fast forward this part so you can get a better idea of what is happening, but look at our true airspeed, 480 knots. Take a guess what the true airspeed will be as we pass through 15,000 feet. And let's fast forward to that part. Watch the true airspeed here, down to 15,000 feet. At 15,000 feet, the true airspeed is approximately 370 knots for a total loss of 110 knots of true airspeed. So remember when the airplane descends, it's going to get much slower. So we may have lost that imaginary 100 knot headwind, but we also lost 100 knots of true airspeed. Depending on the aircraft type and the rate of descent actually being flown, around 15,000 feet is a good place to start that speed reduction to 250 knots. This method is very simple. If there's a headwind or a tailwind, your ground speed will be affected. The time will also be affected. The descent is started based on time. All that's going to be factored into the calculated rate of descent, but you can also redo that calculation halfway through the descent or more and come up with a new required rate of descent. This method is also quite simple. When using an airplane with a VNAV such as the CJ4, the top of descent is calculated for you. But here's how to estimate that top of descent without VNAV. The airplane is once again at 40,000 feet. Take the first two digits, 40, multiply by three, which comes out to 120 nautical miles. And looking at the distance to go, the airplane's almost 120 miles from the destination and the top of descent is just one mile away from us. And I've seen multiple places online where people will say, oh, just multiply your altitude times three and start your descent then. But they rarely say how fast of a descent is required. A standard rate of descent cannot be used. It's always going to be variable based on ground speed. And there's two ways to do that. Find the ground speed and multiply by five. Or divide the ground speed by two and add a zero at the end of it. So if the ground speed is 400 knots, divide that by two, that's 200, add a zero, that's 2,000. Both methods give the exact same number, so it doesn't matter which one you use. You can also use that same calculation to fly a three degree path on an ILS or a GPS approach with vertical guidance. And that works because all we're doing here is flying a three degree path. Here's the same example with our Learjet. At 40,000 feet, 40 times three is 120. We're exactly 120 nautical miles from the destination right now. To figure the descent rate, again, ground speed times five or ground speed divided by two and add a zero. It makes no difference. This is about mental math. So whichever is the easiest for you is the best way to do it. Based on a ground speed of 430 knots, and yes, I'm rounding here, that would be a descent rate of 2,150 feet per minute. 
Remembering what we talked about earlier, as the airplane descends, true airspeed is also going to drop. So as the airplane gets lower, it's going to get slower, which is going to give us more time to get down. So even if we maintain this 2100 feet per minute, we're still going to get down. And then all could change if there's a drastic change in a headwind or tailwind as the airplane descends. But using the first method with time, we can recompute easily if our descent rate is going to work or not. But let's quickly fast forward down to 15,000 feet and do the same method we did on method one to double check if we're going to get down in time or not. Granted, the airplane will have to be slowed down at 10,000 feet to 250 knots, but this will work for this method. At 15,000 feet, we can see there's approximately 8 minutes remaining until we reach the destination, which is at sea level. This rate of descent, over 2,000 feet a minute, let's just round it to 2,000. And times 8 minutes, that's 16,000 feet. We're going to have a more than a 1,000 foot buffer. At this rate of descent, the airplane will easily reach the desired altitude prior to the airport. Other considerations, like I said earlier, we do have to slow to 250. That's going to buy a little bit more time. But another thing is, the airplane also has to be slowed down to get configured. So one way to combat this, to always give yourself a little extra time, is add a few hundred feet per minute to the required rate of descent, which can always be adjusted during the descent. So you can see this method is quite simple. It gives you an exact start point of when you need to get down and also it tells you how fast you need to get down based on ground speed. So if you have a headwind or tailwind, it doesn't matter. That's already figured in. This is the exact same way that VNAV is computed with the FMS and even if flying an airplane in Microsoft Flight Simulator with VNAV, if you slow the airplane down, the required rate of descent is going to decrease and if the airplane speeds up, the opposite's gonna happen. In the real world, ATC is going to tell us when to descend. In Microsoft Flight Simulator, or even in the real world, when they give us pilot discretion to an altitude, then we start using methods like these. So there you have it. Two simple ways to get the airplane down and to know when to start the descent and how fast. And also, if you're still watching at this point, be sure to go down to the comments and just say, I'm still watching. And if you are still watching, thank you for watching.